a big part of upskilling and literacy is experimentation. It's equally as important to get that hands-on experience with AI applications and learn as they're using. So what are, what are your thoughts on how to set up a, a sandbox so users can get hands-on experience? I mean, what, how, do, how do people do it? What guardrails should be in place? What's a balance? Um, Anders, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you kick this off. Well, I, I think that uh, the, the battle here is going to be between uh, the IT guys uh, that want to deploy this already and maybe already deployed it without telling anybody and, uh, you know, your, your back end, your training core that is like, we do not have any materials prepared for this uh, and, we, you know, we haven't loaded up uh, our exact, uh, you, know, you know, models and documentation into the, the back end of this language model. So I think you know part of it is going to be a, a little bit of restraint, and I I think we've seen this maybe a little bit in the industry where you know everybody and and you know LinkedIn was mentioned for you know for AI generated content where you know it's got the button right down to the bottom rewrite this post with AI, and you're kind of like maybe we shouldn't in certain areas promote it that heavily if we don't want people to be lazy like. So I, I think that that's the, the deployment is going to be, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, it's maybe a little rash at the moment. Maybe we need a little more strategy. Uh, so do we need to get this deployed in the next 14 days? Probably not. Maybe we can wait, you know, six weeks and try to uh, have it a little more organized. Awesome. And uh, Vinny, any insight on how to set up a sandbox or how to promote experimentation in a healthy way in an organization? I think, you know, I think it's always, training is always uh, audience specific, right? So for end users, I could see a sandbox, which is specific to use cases. You know, give them an exposure to what is happening behind the scenes, but focus on the particular use case and their role in the use case, right? But honestly, the the literacy needs to go up the organization too. I am just shocked at how much money is being spent by executives who really don't understand what they're getting for the month, right? That kind of literacy in, involves looking at how much data is available to machines, how much is who is it available from, uh, you know, the, the the why is processing why is GPU so expensive why is so taking so much energy and so on. I think that is a much more sophisticated uh, level of training that we need to prepare our executives for. I'm, I'm just seeing, I'm shocked at how much money is being spent with very poor payback. Uh, and it's because the literacy is coming from reading magazines, not from proper exposure to all the elements of investment and operational um, needs. Vinny, you, you mentioned power requirements, and I saw just recently that uh, uh, that Microsoft was looking at restarting Three Mile Island and getting nuclear power plants to power their AI data centers. Do you do you think that there could be increased costs in the future when the the source companies like uh, OpenAI stop subsidizing the usage, uh, and we actually have to pay for the power that we're using? Well, you know, so what is a country? trend also starting and I'm encouraged by this. I think people are realizing we don't need LLMs and GPUs for everything. Okay. Um, yeah, smaller models are able to do a lot more. I mean, think about composable applications we've been talking about, right? Composable applications are making us think in terms of small objects, not giant ERP solutions, right? Something similar ha is happening in the language model thinking, which is LLMs are great, but not every you know, it's a, it's a big hammer for small nails going on. So we need smaller models. And those will bring us back to, you know, we don't need very, very hungry LLMs for everything. So I think a, a contrarian view is we've got to balance it out. We have to start worrying about EVs sucking up our power as much as AI. I want to bring it back, bring back the discussion to this idea of experimentation and, and you know, what... Donald, I'm going to ask you, it's like, well, what kind of guardrails do you need to put on? How far do you open it up to the organization? Can everybody just start playing with AI? What What do you suggest? 
Yeah, this is a really important uh, point about sandboxes. People think of sandboxes as being like a free-for-all. You know, we just open this up and anyone can do it. My neighbors have a sandbox. They have a sandbox in their garden for their kids to play in. Uh, before they let their kids have to play in it, they have to make sure the raccoons haven't pooped in it. And then they can let the then they can let the kids play in it. I'm not quite sure where that metaphor is going, but it's going somewhere. But I think the mistake is to think that the sandbox is just a free for all. And this is it's a dangerous mistake for a couple of reasons. Um, one very important one is that under an increasingly amount of consumer protection law, and the sort of law that you get in, the, U- in um, the U.S. and California, but increasingly, of course, in Europe with GDPR, there are usage restrictions on how data can be used. It's not about access to data. You can have access to data, but you still can't use it for certain purposes. So even with a sandbox where you want people to experiment, you have to be careful that they're not using the data for certain purposes. So there's a degree of education and a degree of governance that has to go into the sandbox. It's not a free for all. And then the other thing we need to make sure is that the um, we understand that the experiments are experiments. In other words, the the sandbox may be for experimentation, but there is a subtle difference between experimentation and prototyping. Prototyping is an early stage of something which you intend to go into production. Experimentation comes before prototyping, which is where we're trying to discover things which may ultimately become a prototype. And I really worry that sometimes we jump from experimentation, especially with AI, we're jumping from experimentation to production without going through this really important stage of prototyping, which is where you actually sort out some of the problems about privacy and security, but also some of these issues that Vinny was raising about, say, power consumption and so on. Data engineers will tell you that some of the, the, the models that they are brought, you know, brought to them to put into production are far too expensive to run. You tweak them slightly and they become far lower cost. I think we've all seen people have, you know, the Amazon or Google bills that become astronomical because somebody's done a full table scan of their largest data warehouse. And, uh, you know, they end up with the multi-thousand dollar bills. So you have to think about it in three stages. There's experimentation in the sandbox, there's prototyping, and there's ultimately production. And if awesome. you think of the sandbox, awesome. stage. Yeah, great, uh, great delineation. Paul, I don't know, maybe you can uh, kind of enlighten us as well, because I, I'm, I'm wondering, are there, are there some specific areas that are better for sandbox experimentation um, that, that you would recommend? Like where, would, where should people really start opening up AI for use by their company? I know you, this is not directly on our agenda, but first you got to, I'm going with Donald here and, and there's the AI ethics, right? Uh, looking at, at the data that's going to come out and what Vinny said earlier about, you know, um, Boeing is not going to let its its latest jet engine technology get out on the, on the, and share it with competitors, the same with any pharma, same with Coca-Cola, all of those examples that Vinny gave. That's not going to happen. But is that going to happen in the sandbox environment? And is it going to escape by accident? And again, back to what Vinny was saying is the lack of maturity in the organizations uh, of what they're expecting out of AI and where is it going to go? So it's all, um, they, if we just look at the general lack of maturity in most organizations on their project management or project delivery, just deliver it and then, you know, uh, uh, are we going to do the same with AI? Not train people, let people just get on with stuff. Uh, and if I just go back to my earlier point about a lot of the junk that's coming out, people are doing searches on AI. They're not reading the results, they're just posting them. If we look a little bit further and go, um, you know, reading articles this week, uh, I've read that feel free to ignore Gen AI. It's a new kind of software development, Is sorry, a new software developer is being born. So we're not even there yet. And that's from the maturity level. People are messing with Python and whatever. That's where we need to control it and go back to, again, to what Vinny said, the use cases. So yeah. is, there, is there a specific area? I don't know. 